Welcome to Deep Dive with Esther, where we connect with incredible people, changing the world a brick at a time. And we have the honor today to have someone who is in our community doing that work. Thank you so much, Michael Elmore, for being here. Absolutely. It is an honor to have you. And thank you for all the work that you do in our community and what you represent. Um, we appreciate you. Well, thank you. I appreciate hearing that. It's nice. <laughs> Absolutely. So, uh, you know, I had to look you up, see what you're about. I see that um, you have done a lot of work in our community as far as being an investigator, um, training officers, patrol supervisor, office of child support, which I appreciate from personal experience. <laughs> <laughs> And the best one of them all, personally, is the car seat technician. Yep. I thank you. And I, I have a story, of course. Um, so a few years ago, I was driving by the sheriff's um, building <laughs> and saw the sign, the car seat inspection. And I was like, you know what? It wouldn't be bad to go take a look. And because of that program, I found out I had the wrong car seat. Oh, really? For the, the age and weight of my children. So I'm over here thinking I'm doing the best I can. Right. <laughs> and it wasn't, it wasn't what they needed. And I got two free car seats. Your work makes a difference. Your work has an impact. You know, as at the time, as a single mom, that's like a four hundred dollars expense that I did not have. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. So the fact that it was ordered, put in my car, um, and still in my car, <laughs> is um, is a service that I am forever grateful for. So again, thank you for all that you do. Now you're here today because you are running. For what? Tell us. Well, I'm running for Addison County Sheriff. Um, I currently work there, so yeah. I'm kind of involved with a lot that the sheriff's department does already. Um, and when the current sheriff decided not to run again, then I felt there was an opportunity there, there to at least go ahead and, and try to uh, to see if I could get elected and, and be able to do that job. Yeah. And where, so law enforcement, that's what you got your degree in yep. and your background. So where did that start? Was it like a dream as a kid? What, 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 what seed was planted to get you to where you are now? Well, I think as any typical boy, you see the, the cop car go by yeah. with the blue lights on or yep. you see him on TV or whatever. And I think that's really where it started for me mm -hmm. was um, just that childhood dream. And after, after a while, just kind of faded, went away. Um, and then when I was in high school getting ready to go to college and thinking about what major I would do, um, uh, I started thinking about, well, it was a dream at one point. Yeah. Why not give it a shot and give it a try? So the college I ended up going to offered uh, criminal justice as a degree. Nice. And uh, once I got involved in it and saw the different courses I could take, I just kind of fell in love with it. And here I am now. Nice. And you came back home to serve your community because from what I read, you grew up in Middlebury, did I you? I did. Yep. Oh, nice. Yep. Nice. Thank you for coming back. <laughs> <laughs> it was w going down south. Mm -hmm. um, the people are different. The weather, the weather's nicer a lot. Yes. That was the hard part was yes. the weather. Yeah. Being able to go outside in April or May and it's mm -hmm. already 70, 80 degrees. Yes. The flowers are blooming. <laughs> Everyone's yeah. mowing their lawns already. Yeah. Um, but there's obviously something special about Vermont that mm -hmm. it's hard to leave. And um, with family and everything here, too, uh, I figured it was a good place to start. And now I'm embedded in the community again, yes. and it's hard to leave. Yeah. Yeah. Please don't. Okay. I don't plan <laughs> on it. Good. Good. Um, but I, I love that you came back. And when you talk about that thing about Vermont that has you coming back, right? I mean, I um, moved here three years ago and I identified it three years ago that this is a special place even with the long winters. <laughs> it's still a beautiful community. It is. So, yep. 
So as you do your work already in the sheriff department, the office, am I saying? The right yeah, name? you can say okay. office department. Okay, it's office said department. different ways all over the place. So okay, okay. Either way is fine. As you work there now, what values lead your work? Um, well, I think first and foremost, the integrity is a big part of it mm. if you if you don't have integrity there's a lot in this job that you can't do if, if people don't trust you as a person then um they're not going to be wanting to to open up to you and tell you what's going on mm -hmm. um so trust is definitely a big thing and then caring about the people mm -hmm. that you're working for and with mm -hmm. is another big part because if you don't have a desire to help them i think you get burned out pretty quick Ooh. um yeah. And as, I think as you see more and do more in law enforcement, uh, it can it can be hard to continue to have that care because you mm -hmm. see the same people coming through the system again and again. Um, and if there's you see holes in the in the system, too, mm -hmm. without those supports there um, that people that's that's how people, I think, keep falling through mm -hmm. the system, so to speak, and you see them again. Um, so if you lose that care for the person, then I think you can kind of get disenfranchised with working in it. Um, so between the integrity and just the, the general care for people, mm -hmm. I think those are two of the big qualities to have working in this job. Yeah, wow. Yes, I agree, I agree. And, um, I, I got a quote from your website. The way you're de they describe you as a leader, and I'm hearing that now, and the way you do it. So C.J. Campbell describes the quiet and steady leadership Mike has shown in hard times speaks to his ability to problem solve and overcome obstacles. But just as important is the same type of leadership he shows when times are not so hard. It is that same quiet and steady approach, a commitment to doing the right thing, tempered by compassion and kind kindness, that assures. And so when you talk about trust, and when I hear how people describe you, where you come with compassion and kindness, yes, how do you do that? Mike, tell me your secret. How do you get people to trust you when, when they're in a vulnerable space, right? When maybe it's, it's just not the best time in their life, but you, you have to be that bridge, right? So how, how do you do that? And you do it, you do it. Um, I think a lot of it goes back to my faith mm. and um, what the Bible teaches about being compassionate to people because yep. it's the it's the times that are hard when we need to be out there helping people and not turning them away yep. and I think there's a lot that's in the Bible that talks about that and so for me it's just looking back at my faith and being able to um, to use that to, to help people yeah um, so I think that's that's really where it comes from comes from for me mm -hmm. and I think some people have different, uh, like everyone has different qualities that are more natural. And I think for me, I'm a bit too trusting of people. Yeah. Um, at times, like I always, even I was, in law enforcement. Yeah, I always, I always, I always want <laughs> to see it. the best yeah. in people, um, for good or bad. Yeah. However, yeah. however you see it, but for me, um, I always want to give everyone that that benefit of the doubt yeah and there are times where it is hard especially in this job um but i do find myself doing that a lot is giving people that benefit and i think that helps me be compassionate towards them because we we can all be in in a situation depending mm -hmm. on the choices we make and mm -hmm. so none of us are immune to making those choices to end up in whatever situation that i end up dealing with someone in so if I can just see myself in in their shoes, then it's a lot easier to, I think, help them out and be compassionate and be yeah. kind to people. Wow, wow, that's what we need, right? That's what we need—the compassion, um, 
hearing that you're still trusting people tells me you're not burnt out. <laughs> Yay. Okay. So what do you do for self-care? How do you sustain yourself to so you won't burn out? Do you have like a long-term plan? Um, I think a lot of it is just spending time with family, yeah. uh, with my wife at home. Mm -hmm. um, she and I both say we're definitely homebodies. Yeah. So we, we just like being together. We like being at home. Um, I have two dogs as well and just spending time with them. Mm -hmm. And it's separating work from home life as well and not taking things home with you, which is hard yeah. in this job, especially being a supervisor because there's a lot of times where I'll get phone calls after I get home or... Mm -hmm. um, I have to kind of just decompress after a long day or whatever it is. So just trying to have that separation and and not bring it home with me, I think helps too. Yeah. Yeah. Very important. Very important. And family is everything. Absolutely. So to, <laughs> yeah. to hear that you have that support um, and you know yourself, you're like, I when I'm home, I'm home. We're, yeah. we're home buddies. <laughs> you know, I just, my daughter is one too. But I'm not, so she's like, I just want to stay home. And learning to respect that has been a challenge. But I, I'm doing it. I'm doing it. Because um, that's the piece that's important, the self-care. What do you need to refill to make sure you can be present when you need to? Right. When you need to. That's wonderful. And then, so, as I was looking at your goals, so it includes um, stability, cooperation and education what what does it mean and what does it look like um, so for the stability I think uh, there's a lot that I can do to help make sure that the department functions well mm -hmm. and I'm already kind of in that role um, nice. but the other piece of it uh, and it kind of goes hand in hand with the education part um, a lot of people don't know how the sheriff's department is funded Mm -hmm. And we, the only, the only person that's uh, funded by the state is the sheriff. I shouldn't say the only person. The other one is the the transport deputy. Mm -hmm. Eventually, that position is kind of it's kind of in flux right now. Mm -hmm. um, so with the pandemic, a lot of the transports stopped, and everything was able to be by video for anyone that that needed to appear in court that mm -hmm. was already incarcerated. Mm -hmm. um, so they're finding less and less of a need to have that state transport deputy is what that position's called. So eventually I can see that position probably going away. Mm -hmm. So really the only person that will be funded by the state is the sheriff. And then the county pays for one, one and a half, one and a part-time uh, office staff. Mm -hmm. So the rest of the deputies all have to be funded within the department. We have to come up with the money in order to cover their expenses. So that comes in with the contracts that we have for patrol with the towns. Mm. Um, you see us on the side of the road with the blue lights on when there's construction. Yeah. All of that is going towards funding those deputies to be able to be out there and doing that. Um, but in order to keep the cost low, uh, we haven't been able to offer benefits, insurance, okay. or um, retirement. And I want to be able to find a way to offer that because mm -hmm. I think it's important mm -hmm. to be able to retain the deputies that we want to because um, a lot of times the sheriff de sheriff's department ends up being either a stepping stone someone just starting their career going on to something else or I then see. when someone's at the end of their career it's just kind of a fill-in job um, mm -hmm. so they can keep making some money as they get closer to just being done mm -hmm. and I want there to be people that can be around all the time uh, and make it a full career, so to speak. Because um, I think it's important for the community to always see the same people out there and get to know the deputies on the department. And if it's just kind of a cycle, then you can't really get to know the people on the department too yeah. well. Yeah. Um, so just that stability of a solid, uh, a solid staff. Mm -hmm. And then cooperation with um, the different departments and agencies around the county, whether it's other police departments or um, the local groups that can we can support somehow or they can support us because we're just I don't want to see the sheriff's department as its own separate agency, mm -hmm. but it's 
it's just a piece of the greater community as a whole. Mm. And if we can fit into the role that we're supposed to and um, help out the different agencies, then I think it'll it'll work a lot better within the community if, if we're working as a team yeah. is what it comes down to. The team approach is right. what I love and seeing yourself not outside of the community but a part of the community. And when you talk about folks being able to stay there at least for a while, so that that's how you build that trust, right? right. That's how folks see familiar faces and um, it makes the difference. And what about education? What are your thoughts on that? Um, it's just helping people to to understand what our role is in yep. the community. Yep. Um, if people know that we're not out there answering the 911 calls like mm -hmm. Vermont State Police are, um, but we're more of that support agency. Mm. Um, I think that, that will help people kind of understand where we're coming from and what we're able to do. Nice. Um, I know down south the sheriff's departments are typically the first response agencies mm -hmm. and it's kind of flip-flopped up here where the state police are the the primary agency mm -hmm. and the sheriff's departments are more in that support role mm -hmm. um, and I just want to help people understand kind of like I touched on how we're funded and then what our role is in the community and just get our name out there a bit more because a lot of people as I've campaigned and stuff they don't really know yeah. what our role is or or what we're able to do. Yeah. Um, so I just want to help people understand what who we are really. Yeah, and you're doing it by being here. <laughs> no, but by having your signs out, by talking about what you all do, and even hearing about how you all are funded is really helpful, and um, helps us frame. Okay, so. The department has to figure it out, have the contracts with the towns, and really um, make do. You don't have retirement, which is hard. Right. In this in this job, to that, not have the insurance or the retirement, it's ooh, extremely difficult. Especially with the family. Right. And that's what we're running into is we yeah. can't we can't get the the people that want to have a long yep. term career in law enforcement mm -hmm. to stay around. Mm -hmm because we do hit those roadblocks with not being able to offer the benefits. Yeah. Oh, it sounds like you have a plan. <laughs> and it sounds like you're ready for this. So I, I'm excited for you to see where it all goes, but I'm happy to hear that you are a pillar <laughs> in our community. And you, you're already here, you grew up here, you know this area and the work that you do changes lives. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you for taking the deep dive with Esther. Thank you.